Deceased Hope at World's End issue 3 sees Wally West tell Linda to stay locked in their apartment and not look at any screens, destroying their TV and phones. As Flash leaves, finding everyone at the Flash Museum has become a zombie thanks to the anti-life virus. Not wanting to stand around and do nothing, Flash gets to work, smashing up the screens all over Keystone as quickly as possible, running faster than sound and thought, brushing against the Speed Force, the place where speedsters can run forever. He feels it pulling him, wanting to join it, but he is soon brought out of it thanks to Batman's voice. Batman tells him the virus cannot take him and he needs to hide, and Wally knows that he would be a threat to the whole world if he were to be infected. Batman says that Barry listened to him, but Wally still wants to save the city. Batman tells him not to get scratched or look at any screens, and Wally doesn't have any time to talk, telling the Dark Knight to stay out of trouble as the infected Batman says goodbye to him a final time. Wally finds he isn't slowing the spread fast enough and needs to be in more places at the same time, and he knows how he can do this as elsewhere. Max Mercury asks if Bart heard any of his neighbors screaming. Bart says that they are putting shelves up without instructions, but Max knows that this is more than just building IKEA furniture screaming. As Bart readies to play his games, Wally rushes in, smashing up the TV. Wally quickly explains the situation to Impulse and soon is joined by Jesse Quick. Wally tells them that they need to stop the spread in Keystone and he will look for somewhere safe for the people. People. All over the country is the same, however, as the zombies rampage through the streets. The speeders clean up the undead as much as they can before finding Gotham isn't safe either. Max knows they need another Earth to go to, so heading to the speed lab, Wally plans on using the tandem cosmic treadmill to pull open a space-time continuum hole. Max says that, that Wally and Bart are the fastest and they need to run at top speed to open the hole and keep it open as long as they can so Jesse and him can evac 200,000 people from Keystone. Impulse doesn't like the idea of Max running through a horde of zombies since he's slower than him, but Max knows that it's the only way the plan works. Wally tells him to make sure no devices or infected are moved with the people, and Jesse agrees since they are taking 200,000 refugees to a new Earth, and a super virus probably isn't a good idea. Flash and Impulse begin running, opening a portal to another world, and the evacuation begins as Max Mercury and Jesse Quick ferry people over, and in 12 minutes, 146,000 people have been ferried safely. However, Impulse is tiring, but they can't slow down. The people are saved as Impulse falls from the treadmill, shot back through a wall by the momentum. Max tells Flash to get to safety and he will get Impulse, racing into the horde Impulse has fallen into outside the museum. Wally Mimo begins to fail on the treadmill, tripping on his own feet, but luckily Max races back with Impulse, grabbing Wally and pulling them through the portal as it closes. Max says there is no time, but Wally doesn't know what he means as time stops, revealing Max got scratched by a zombie. He apologizes to Bart, saying that he wasn't as fast as he once was. Max can feel it coming for him, so he tells Wally that he knows what to do. Wally knows nothing can save Max as the hero wants Flash to kill him. Wally suddenly gets an idea, telling everyone to transfer some of their speed into him as Flash and Max take off, running through sound and light and into the speed force, where Wally leaves Max Mercury to run forever, free from the virus. Deceased Hope at World's End issue 3 was a fantastic Wally West and Flash family-centric issue that added a little bit of hope into a hopeless universe. I really enjoyed seeing Max Mercury again and have him actually get a really heroic moment there and I'm looking forward to seeing if this alternate Earth that they took all the refugees from Keystone ends up factoring into Dead Planet at all. But knowing our luck, Tom Taylor is going to find someone infected on that Earth as well and it'll just ruin everything, which will be a lot of fun to watch. I'm glad Wally, Bart and Jesse all survived and looking forward to seeing how they actually actually factor into later issues of this series as well as Dead Planet. I'm going to give this issue an 8.5 out of 10.